the other webinars were great. I just watched the, the hair salons. Oh, good. Great. Thank you, Christina. Hi. Hi. I was a hairdresser um, on, on State Street, and my grandfather um, had a barber shop for 65 years on Orange Street, Frank Cavalier's uh, barber shop. He's now passed seven years ago, but uh, I come from a family of hairdressers, and my aunt owned Panache. Oh, wow. Yes. That's great. <laughs> you have the hookup. Hairdressers. Yeah. <laughs> Your hair is always on point. <laughs> Barbara, can you um, have Jenna be a panelist? Yeah, Barbara, I just wanted to, I, ha I have a response to a hair salon question about the head covering. So that's not accurate. They do not need one, but I don't know how to get that message out. Do I just want to, because I want to make sure I'm consistent with. Okay, what we're going to do is send out a follow-up email to everyone who attended each of the sessions so okay. we can include that information in the email. Thank you, Barbara. You're welcome. Thank you, Barbara. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks so much for doing this today, all the panelists. Hi, Michael. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Okay, the panel can proceed. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Kathleen Krolak. I'm a staffer in economic development at the city of New Haven. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes. Okay, excellent. I want to welcome you and thank you for your time. I want to also introduce our, our three panelists uh, from the restaurant sector. We have Allison Dorenzi from Lorchio, Christina Fitzgerald, Union League Cafe, and Gopi Nair from Tikaway. We're going to start uh, right with the agenda. We have a, a large agenda, uh, a lot of information to cover, and a, a lot of participants. We'd like you to engage the chat box 
it's if you haven't used Zoom, it's at the bottom of your screen bar. Uh, we'll put questions there. We will distribute the answers to the questions uh, that we don't get to during the meeting as well. And we're going to start with uh, the Director of Health, Director Maritza Bond, uh, to give us an overview on, on the health regulations in regard to outdoor dining. Good, good morning, everyone, and um, welcome. It's actually afternoon now. Um, and so I can wanted to share some slides, if that's okay, just to give you a visual as I'm talking, because I'm very visual as well. So thank you all that are on the call and are preparing uh, to expand your services um, with outdoor dining. And so what we wanted to do uh, this morning from the health side, just give an overview about the reopening and inspection process. And so really for establishments, um, as you know, we wanna talk about the operational reopening requirements that were issued by the governor and just make sure that we are in alignment with that. And just review as a reminder of the kitchen and dining inspection procedures and some other protocols. And so this is, should be familiar to many of you. This was issued from the guidance from the governor in regards to the self-certification process and also proper um, procedures of how to handle uh, both um, hand sanitizer areas and different areas within the establishment. So I will, will not delve into that and we'll, uh, could you see that? Could you still see my slides? Okay. Mm -hmm. So what we have is for facility operations. So we wanna make sure that individuals are aware that proper signs on how to, uh, are posted on how to stop the spread of COVID-19. Um, those can be found on CDC website, and we will also be posting them on our website. It's just making sure that customers are aware of the COVID-19 signs of how to stop the spread, making sure that you have social distancing protocols, your clean and disinfecting protocols need to be clear and defined as we will review them. There's proper PPE use and burn rate established within um, your establishments and making sure that there is a screening measure in place for employees uh, to stay home if they're sick and making sure that you encourage that they remain home if they're sick. That was already a protocol within the establishments, but now you have to just take it up another level um, in regards to symptomatic individuals that may be presenting the COVID-19 symptoms. Customers should not enter if they're not, if they're experiencing symptoms. So if there's any visible signs, um, as well as making sure that you have posted signs reminding people of what the symptoms are is critically important so that customers do not enter or are um, going to be served at your establishment. The entire facility before reopening needs to be thoroughly cleaned for those establishments that have not been operating at all. Beginning the inspection process. We want to be able to ensure that we can identify who the manager or the CFPM um, is for the establishment to discuss the operation status. So this is what to inspect when we come on site, making sure that you have the um, establishment for takeout, delivery to outdoor dining, um, especially um, now that outdoor dining is expanding. We want to make sure that we determine if all staff have been trained on the new guidelines for reopening. So if you have not been preparing workforce development, we encourage you to please set a date to retrain your staff with the new reopening guidelines that were issued by the governor. We want to make sure that the, the training not only starts before the reopening, but that continues every two weeks and that it's documented so that you have that in place. You wanna make sure that you have a well-written cleaning plan in place as well that provides the EPA approved list of disinfectants that need to be used. Employees, health and safety. We wanna make sure that there is a employee log of when they're signing in and signing out of work. This was part of the guidance that was issued. You wanna make sure that you have a daily health check again before they arrive to work. There's a screening um, form that's also published by CDC. We will also make sure that a screening form template is also on our website for you to easily access. We want to ensure that staff are familiar with the sign and symptoms again. And so we want to make sure that those signs are visible and able to see for the public and for employees. Washing your hands um, should be displayed within the restroom areas as well. 
employees must be trained on the new proper hand washing guidelines. We wanna make sure that they are reminded of the proper hand washing guidelines of 20 seconds or more per the CDC guidelines and that the hand washing station is fully functional and reaching a minimum of 100 Fahrenheit with the temperature. We wanna make sure that you are also equipped and fully stocked with paper towels, soap, trash cans are uh, easily accessible and then also change frequently. We wanna make sure that the hand washing signs, again, are properly posted in every area and easily accessible. In the kitchen and dining area, we wanna ensure coolers and freezers and walk-ins and hot holding and cold hot holding are functioning normally. We will be checking that this is normal, regular procedures for inspections, that we will be checking um, the, the monitors are in uh, place in the proper and, um, units that need to be placed, and that we will be checking for that the temperature for both hot and cold, and are also properly calibrated on your end for temperature control. Food production um, inspection, we will, we will be making sure that food is wholesome and not expired or spoiled or untampered with, that everything is properly labeled and properly stored. We will also be looking at water plumbing and ice. So we wanna make sure that there's all um, water and sewage lines are properly working and in order, make sure that there's proper supply of hot and cold water is available and ice machines and soda guns are cleaned and sanitized. As you know, per the guidance, um, we uh, want to make sure that that's not readily available to customers outside um, self-serving. We want to make sure that there's a uh, washing, uh, the wear washing equipment, the three base sinks must be functional and cleaned um, and equipped with sanitizer and the proper detergent. This washing machine should be checked to ensure that they are properly functioning. And so when you are gearing up for reopening, just making sure that all of your equipment um, are properly clean, sanitize, and that the three base stations are in operation when we come on site. Other considerations for kitchen area, we wanna make sure that all services, both food contact and non-food contact have been thoroughly cleaned before reopening. We wanna ask everyone for ventilation rates are increased in the kitchen, making sure there's a proper flow of air conditioning um, and all of that ventilation system has been assessed by your ventilation vendors. Kitchen workstations are rearranged to provide the maximum social distancing of kitchen staff. Again, social distancing is the minimum of six feet apart from each other and proper PPE. Specific equipment has been assigned to each staff member and delivery of trays to prevent cross-contamination. So making sure that specific equipment is assigned to the proper staff members and then properly disinfected um, with really hot temperature water within the, dishwa the dishwasher. We want to make sure that you provide clear floor markings and other methods to ensure staff is social distancing at least six feet apart from each other. So clear markings should be on the floors. And bathrooms, bathrooms should be properly stocked with supplies. There should be clear pathways and markings again for social distancing both for customers and staff that will be present. Cleaning and disinfecting products of the bathrooms should be properly stocked and available and should be logged of how often the bathrooms are being cleaned. Bathrooms should be cleaned very frequently, and also we recommend touchless appliances for soap dispensers, trash cans when possible. The outside dining areas and what to expect from us. Um, the guidance provides these as um, essential items, and so we will just be doing a check to make sure that they're being followed, making sure there's a clear pathway, table seatings are six feet in distance, using disposal menus, pre-wrapped disposable eating utensils and touchless appliances, especially trying to discourage cash and the use of credit card machines. Outside dining, again, making sure that both the staff are wearing mask coverings as well as the customers, even if they're not dining. Hand sanitizers must be available at entrances and exits to the establishments and signage should be posted to customers to report violations um, either to 211 or our C Click Fix site that's on the City of New Haven website. Condiments should be either prepackaged or served in pre portioned individual containers. And at this juncture, I want to turn it back over to our moderator to continue, and I will answer questions um, as they are allowed within the panel discussion. 
Thank you, Director. I'd like one of the uh, panelists to just comment on what their experience has been so far in preparing in, in regard to the health rules. Well, I'll go. I'll go first. I've been open for. Uh, well, my name is Gopi, and I own Takeaway in uh, Orange Street. Um, was closed for a few weeks, and I opened last week. Uh, for takeouts and deliveries only and uh, because uh, I wasn't closed for extended periods um, I did not have uh, a lot of difficulty in uh, reopening per se in fact so emails and uh, Facebook posts kind of got all the customers back in but in terms of uh, 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 following all the protocols because we are uh, serve safe certified operators so that kind of uh, uh, is a norm uh, keeping all the uh, sanitization and the cleaning procedures in place, which is uh, per the health codes anyway. So we have uh, uh, actually not allowed our customers to come inside. So we are we are only doing curbside pickup. So it's just our staff who comes in, uh, minimum staff at the moment. So they they feel safe if no one from outside is coming and using the bathrooms or or coming and taking coming inside the store for for picking up food. Uh, so we we stay safe. We kind of uh, uh, wash hands like crazy um, with soap, like that, like they show in TV. Um, it it starts with fun, but it's been it's been a great experience so far. Uh, though the volume as such is not still there, but but we feel safe and uh, the staff is uh, 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 you know pretty comfortable in these environments. And I guess going forward, it could just be an extension of the same. Kathleen. Christina, are you having a problem uh, unmuting? Yes, okay. Allison, would you like to add to the conversation about what you've done so far? Um, sure, you know, we, um, I'm very lucky. I have a very seasoned staff. We've all been working together for a long time, so we trust each other and I trust them, which has been helpful and it's given overall a sense of comfort to them coming back in. Um, you know, we are lucky we have a lot of space. We have a lot of outdoor dining. We also have an expansive space inside with two floors. Um, so what we've been trying to do is maximize in and out flow. We'll be having guests coming down our side alley. They'll be waiting out front queuing with spaces for social distancing. It'll be reservation only. They'll have to line up out there and then their server uh, would go down the side alley, grab them, invite them to follow them. Well, they'll be getting disposable menus, disposable cutlery at their tables. Uh, they're gonna be instructed to stay at their tables at all time. The servers will also have um, an X marked away from the table where they're gonna be standing when they're discussing with tables. We're gonna be asking patrons to order their drinks and their food at the same time. All those things to diminish that back and forth between the tables. Um, they will be directed to stay at their tables at all time. They're not allowed to get up and, and approach another table or comment. Uh, if they need to use the restroom, they're going to have to ask their server so they can be directed to the right spot because our restrooms are inside. Um, it is sort of a tight area for us. We've moved our hostess station out of that area. So uh, they are away from that flow of people and people will be exiting the building. So we've removed all of our furniture from our downstairs. There's nothing for someone. There's no chairs. There's nothing. It's just a big open space where people will shoot directly out. So when they get up from their table, they will have a pay station where they have a PayPal QBR. We have Apple Touch. Um, we have, uh, you know, the hover reader. We'll also have the option of signing. We'll have two, uh, one of my servers actually uh, brought this up and I suggest you touch base with your servers because they've been doing takeout and things like that and they've seen things. And one of my girls had suggested um, if people prefer to sign, you can have two bins of pens, one which has been sanitized and one for them to put on the side and you can keep re-sanitizing them and putting them back in the clean bin. So once they get up from their table, they will go through, they will pay and they will be directed to leave the building. Uh, also having them request going to the bathroom gives us the option to clean all of our hot points once they leave. Um, so we're gonna be reservation only and we are going to be uh, limiting seating times and staggering guests as well as uh, staggering our staff and having minimal occupancy. Uh, the staff on the inside, they all have created specific work zones. They're not allowed um, in each other's work zones. So they will have an area where they can, um, it'll be sanitized regularly obviously, but they'll also have a personal area where they can sanitize when they come in and before they leave where they can keep their personal belongings, their book, their computer or anything. So they'll have a space that's safe for them for their downtime. We've also have our bartender is going to be assuming coffee making duties so uh, people are not in and out of there. So when the bartender comes in, they sanitize their area. They can work free and clearly there knowing that nobody else is coming into their area. Um, everybody's been you know, on board. Um, you know, we feel uh, that we can, as long as our, our guests um, 
<laughs> actively participate, we feel that we have systems in place that would minimize any impact amongst individuals. Christina, would you like to add something? Okay. We just, I want to screen share our agenda and some other documents. We're going to, if there are no other questions specific uh, to this or something else that uh, hasn't come up in the chat box that's been answered, we'll, we'll move on to some of the uh, approvals. Does anyone have any other questions? Kathleen, there's uh, two questions here. Uh, Derek John says, will the gathering ban of 50 be lifted May 20th? We were told a certain amount will be allowed or have we heard wrong? There has been no notification as, as of that to date. The first phase of opening is for outdoor dining only and hair salons and barbershops. And, um, and so there's also a question in the queue about food trucks. Um, I can address that now or uh, but food trucks will um, be able to also open and are in the process of going through that now and I can review that if there's time. Carmela is asking, is there a limit on how long customers can stay or is that up to us? Also, do we have to change our hours? The answer to the question about changing hours, the executive order 7MM asks that outdoor seating or requires that outdoor seating end at 11 p.m. So to the extent that we have some restaurants that are open later than that uh, in the city, you'll have to adjust your hours to 11 and we recommend that you post, um, you know, change your signage to reflect that. Uh, Matt had a question earlier. Has anyone had luck in finding a source of touchless hand sanitizer dispensers? We found them out of stock on all our suppliers. Anybody want to take uh, this I one? I ordered mine two months ago, and hopefully they'll be here by June 1st. <laughs> so it seems like we're back ordered at certain places. Um, Glenn says he found them on Office Max yesterday. So, Brian, you might want to check on Office Max. Maybe you'll get lucky. Adam had only, a I was going to say um, the New Haven Chamber of Commerce yesterday uh, provided a list of vendors that have certain supplies on, his, on, the, on their website. Adam had a question, can we serve alcohol? If they have an alcohol permit, they have to follow the alcohol permit guidelines. And we'll get into that a little bit later in the permitting section of the presentation. All right, I'm gonna do um, two more questions. I'll let you guys continue. Uh, Anonymous is asking, is there a limit of seats for outdoor dining? I know it's 50% of occupancy, but if you are applying for a permit, is there a cap? No, no cap. It's going to be just to the 50% mark uh, per the executive order. Um, but another question, are we allowed to have customers order food inside our fast casual restaurant or solely take out starting May 20th? Gage, I'm not so sure that what was the question? Saying, yeah, the are question we I think have, is, are we allowed to have customers order food inside or solely take out starting May 20th? They should not be congregating inside. It's takeout only, correct? That's the phrase that we're using. Takeout is takeout curbside. Okay. Um Joseph asks, uh, sidewalk dining, question mark, question mark. Um, I guess he's asking, is that an, an option? Yes, we'll cover that in the next section on permitting. All right, I'm gonna pause now on questions, let you guys uh, take over. And let Thanks. me know when, you, when we wanna talk about food trucks, if, that, if time allows. Thanks. Okay, uh, now we're going to move into uh, permitting and approvals for outside dining. Uh, we'll talk about public, uh, private space and uh, public space. I'd like to introduce Jenna Montesano, who's 
uh, you've already heard from before. She is the director of zoning. Jenna, I, I'll screen share the the document, the the new website for reopen. Sure, I'll just do some introductory remarks on the um, the executive order, very high level first, and then we'll go to our new website platform that um, will assist restaurants with getting their permitting. Uh, so executive order 7MM, you've heard a little bit about it today, but very high level. What this executive order from the governor does is it creates flexibility by lifting and modifying local ordinances that might otherwise prohibit or limit outdoor dining. So this executive order allows us as a city to streamline our approval processes for outdoor dining in public parking spaces, private parking spaces, on sidewalks, in other city owned spaces, um, parks, right of ways, and other types of areas around the city. Uh, there was a question about liquor. I'll also note that the executive order extends existing liquor permits to directly adjacent spaces to your restaurant. So if you're gonna spill your outdoor dining onto the sidewalk or into a side yard, you're covered. If you're applying to go into a park or on a city owned space or something like that, you may need to get a new liquor permit. So you should check uh, the consumer protection website and get in touch with the zoning department and we could help direct you if you're in need of a new or extended liquor permit. Uh, so Kathleen, if you wouldn't mind just sharing the website at this point, um, the website that Kathleen is bringing up, uh, you could find it linked to the Together New Haven page. You could also find it linked to the City of New Haven's COVID-19 page. Uh, it's the Reopen New Haven initiative. And uh, there you'll find a bunch of resources on the permitting side. I just want to note that all of the permitting uh, is gonna end up uh, with a health review. So even if you've checked all the boxes that I'm about to talk about, that the health department is the last department that's gonna review your application and you're going to need to have self-certified and you're going to need to satisfy the health department that you're following all the protocols that Director Bond uh, discussed previously. So what you're looking at now is uh, our outdoor seating application. This was a joint effort uh, between the um, city plan department, Department of Public Works, traffic and parking, the building department, parks department, and health. And what you'll do is you'll download this application and you're gonna check uh, the type of application that you're applying for. And you could apply for more than one all simultaneously because we've created one set of application requirements for outdoor dining. So what you'll do is you'll submit this application form that you're seeing with the boxes checked. You're gonna submit a site plan a two scale site plan. This could be hand drawn on graph paper. This could be um, done by a professional, but it does not have to be. Uh, and your site plan is going to show your barrier around your outdoor seating. It's going to reflect that your tables are um, for no more than five people and are spaced six feet apart. Uh, it'll show the flow of how you will escort your guests to tables and where staff um, will be flowing and any you know wait staff um, areas for trays and things of that nature. All of that will be labeled on your site plan. You'll also provide a narrative, which is the screen you're seeing right now. And narrative should explain, uh, as required by executive order, um, any impacts uh, with noise, waste management, odor, light pollution, environmental impacts. Uh, we expect that a lot of these will be reduced because we're going to 50% capacity, but to the extent there's any changes to your plans, you should reflect them here. Um, and you can attach any additional pages or illustrations or spec sheets if you want to, you know, provide uh, examples of signage you're going to post for review or um, barriers you're going to put up or anything like that. Uh, when you do it on sidewalks, we specifically ask that you include um, what furniture you're going to be putting out there. That's part of our regular outdoor seating permit on sidewalks that we have in regular circumstances. So we ask that you submit those during this time as well. If you wanna keep scrolling, Kathleen, a little bit. We put some helpful guidelines here. Um, as a reminder, you must be following the Reopen Connecticut guidelines and all of the things that Director Bond reminded you of at the top of the hour. 50% um, capacity, uh, no live music on the sidewalk, things of that nature. So here's a helpful list um, of guidelines. And then if you scroll down a little further, 
we have tent requirements. Uh, just as a reminder, any tents over 900 square feet need a building permit. That's not new. That's part of our typical protocols. Uh, because the benefit of having outdoor seating is the open flow of air, you cannot have sides on the tent um, for safety reasons. You can't have um, heating elements under the tent or anything like that. Um, if you have any specific questions to the tent you might be proposing, you should refer those questions to the building department and they'll let you know whether that needs to be part of your outdoor seating permit or whether you're going to be required to pull a separate permit for your tent. Uh, you can keep scrolling, Kathleen. Just a reminder at the bottom of that page, this is a temporary permit. So when the executive order lifts, um, this will this will go away. So um, we'll, we'll see how this goes together. This is obviously something we want to make sure is safe and effective. Um, and anything that we really like, we would encourage you to contact the zoning department in particular about anything you'd like to see be a more permanent fixture in the city of New Haven moving forward. But this is this is temporary for now. You'll sign the certificate of acknowledgement. And then we have some standard submission requirements. So just to reiterate, you're gonna submit this application. You're gonna submit your scaled site plan. And here's a list of things, uh, helpful hints about what you submit. We're asking that ADA parking spaces remain as parking spaces. And if you're doing takeout services, let's uh, reserve one regular parking space that is signed for, uh, for takeaway service. Um, we can be flexible. This is a reasonable condition we need to impose so that if you have out, uh, off street parking that we're using it effectively, but otherwise we are permitting outdoor seating in off street parking spaces. You can keep scrolling Kathleen. Uh, you need a certificate of insurance for uh, any seating that you're proposing in the public right of way. This is not a new requirement. This is a this is a, a existing requirement in city owned spaces. So it's something to uh, start working with uh, uh, your insurance people on now so that when you get ready to apply, you could submit the certificate of insurance with the city of New Haven listed as an additional insured. And again, as I said before, the filing fee right now is waived. The executive order waives um, the application fee and the city of New Haven was already contemplating doing that anyway because we wanna make this accessible for all of our restaurants in New Haven. Uh, if you are going to be proposing outdoor seating in a city owned parking space, there is a rental fee of $30 per month per parking space and the Department of Traffic and Parking can assist you with that. Could you just, um, Flash back to the um, the website, Kathleen. Jenna, I've got a quick question from someone. If someone sure. already has a permit for outdoor dining, do they still have to fill out the application? Great question. The answer is no. If you have an existing outdoor dining permit, we direct you only to the health department to make sure that you're self uh, self certified as as complying and that the health department is satisfied. You should have done a renewal at the beginning of the month, I believe, Director Bond. But if you have not, you should get in touch with them immediately. Exactly. Thank you, Jenna. Sure. So this is the page I was referring to earlier, the Reopen uh, New Haven page. And uh, this is where you can find everything you need to apply. Um, so if you scroll down just a little bit, Kathleen, we have uh, the application packet. It's a downloadable, uh, fillable PDF. So you can download that and fill it out. That's the document we just looked at together. Uh, and then you will go to New Haven City Squared, create a profile and upload your application and all the attachments. If you're having any trouble with City Squared, uh, our program manager is Selena uh, Manning in the building department. So you should direct any questions um, to her. Can you scroll down just a little further, Kathleen? We've provided an application review flowchart so you could see which departments are going to be reviewing your application. These are the people that you may hear from as your as your common application through city departments. So we're gonna make sure that health and safety is taken into account. The health department will ultimately review these permits, but we're also going to make sure that traffic and parking, engineering, parks, et cetera, review your applications. So you'll be hearing from, from us at the city as we look at your application. 
Uh, the executive order requires that approvals be done within 10 days of a complete application, and we're going to strive to get them turned around as quickly as possible to get you guys operating. You could scroll down a little bit further. We've provided some resources for your restaurant. So we've done a summary of the executive order. We posted the order itself, the reopen Connecticut rules, and then we've provided some uh, design guidelines. So uh, one tool is, a, is the tactical urbanist guide, um, which you can take a look at. Uh, this is not a binding document in New Haven, but it should be helpful for figuring out how you can create um, an appropriate, safe outdoor seating area for your restaurant. It's a really cool, a really cool little guide. Um, we recommend that you take a look. And then uh, we've also provided back on the main page of the web, um, we've also provided some sample uh, site plans. Um, so we have what it might look like if you lay out parking spaces in a, uh, if you lay out your tables in a parking space. So here's three standard city parking spaces, uh, nine by 18. You could com comfortably fit four, um, four tops in three parking spaces. So that's an example in parking spaces. A little bit further down, we have a potential sidewalk layout. Uh, so you could see a, you know, some, some two tops fit comfortably with six feet between tables and six feet of passage for pedestrians. And then coming soon is a updated manual for our Taras program in the city, a program that already exists, but will be updated to comply with all of these new rules and regulations. And this will provide some guidelines for how you will do uh, parking or outdoor seating in on street parking spaces. This is the one subject to additional uh, traffic and parking review and the $30 per space per month charge. I think that's all I have, uh, Gage, if you want to help me with um, directing some questions. Uh, Wob from Lalabella, I don't have any outdoor dining place. Can downtown district build a patio in front of my restaurant? A terrace spot, I, th I think is what you're referring to. And that'll be what you could see on the screen now, the terrace program. Town Green did offer that to their to their district. I think you can uh, rent or, or pay them to build it out. Uh, and thank you for bringing that up because we were changing the program to be citywide and therefore you wouldn't have that option from Town Green, I think just due to capacity. Uh, but uh, we will add that in as an option for uh, those that are in the downtown district. Thank you, Kathleen. Uh, Brian had a question. Has there been any discussion on temporary street closures for outdoor dining expansion? I can take that one. So we've had a number of conversations. People are submitting ideas. We're going to take that a lot slower in part because of the surge that may happen on May 20th. And we want to do this in a very responsible fashion because we're doing this as a public health safety first set of initiatives. Email the ideas for now so that we can start to review them with our city staff, similar to the guidance that we have on the screen for public health safety and the traffic. Um, and then with the alders and others, because the city street permit is a much more extensive review. Thank you, Mike. Joseph had a question. If we, use, uh, if we do sidewalk dining, what types of barriers should be used? It's going to depend a lot on the width of the sidewalk and how much space you have to move around. So to the extent you have wider sidewalks, um, you should be using, you, you've probably seen them around the city. You see planters, you see sometimes the rope um, barriers, things of that nature. But the building department's going to try to be as flexible as possible um, in, in allowing you to be able to serve your customers on the sidewalk. So uh, propose what you think is reasonable and someone will be in touch from the city to provide you additional guidance. You could see in the example on the website that only a couple planters are proposed because on a nine foot wide sidewalk, you can't have both um, some physical barrier and tables and pedestrian um, movement. So um, we'll work together on that to, to get something that makes sense. Carl says, uh, the metered parking in front of my place, the anchor spa is currently a loading zone until 4 p.m. when it becomes regular metered parking. 
Can this be waived so we can get a terrace? And there are some other things on loading zone restrictions for terraces. Mike, do you know if the meter bag program is going to perhaps be able to include loading spaces? I'm not sure if we've if we have a, an answer on that right right now. Just to dial it back a little bit, the third part of this overall effort on outdoor dining is the ability to get more people to the curb faster, you know, a little bit more people coming to the office building. So we see this opportunity to support restaurants with takeout parking spaces that are specifically for takeout. I don't see an immediate problem perhaps with using some of the loading spaces, but we'll circle back with Doug to see how we're going to roll it out for May 20th. And uh, Gopi, do you want to provide uh, any insight? You've been through the uh, Taras program, and I and it's been successful for you. Gopi, you're muted. Sorry. Um, yeah, um, Tikaway uh, has actually had good success with the Taras program in the last five, six years. It's been on. Um, Primarily for, for me, I've always used Takeaway as a, the Terrace program primarily as a marketing tool for, uh, you know, for the good visuals that, that it presents, you know, uh, being city, New Haven City looks much like a European chic city and, uh, and driving Orange Street is a pretty, pretty heavy on, uh, on, on, uh, on four wheelers. So because it's a block too far from the greens, uh, my foot traffic is not as much, but, but the Terrace program helps me give more eyeballs. People driving by would, would see that beautiful setup out there and, and the second or third time around, they would go come, come in. Um, so that, that actually helps a lot in terms of getting our, um, our, our, um, our, our product out for customers who are going by and, uh, and making a future purchase. Uh, the current scenario, uh, typically it's a 10 seater. With the terrace, we typically get three tables and there would be uh, a maximum of 10 seats. Uh, but I guess with the current regulations, it would definitely be reduced, uh, which I guess still would, would be worth it because we would definitely get a, a, a two, two tops, uh, two, two tops at least uh, outside and we can manage and depending on the regulations where it comes, what, what would be applicable. But those additional tables would definitely be adding uh, more value to the business and overall uh, feelers. It's a, make, it's a feel good uh, a factor as well for people walking around. It feels safer in the evenings mm -hmm. um, uh, in the neighborhood as well. The nine square is uh, uh, looks looks better, cleaner, and more, more safer for people around. Um, uh, I guess with the with the staffs were trained to be are already been you know spoken and trained for for serving the customers outside when they're sitting in the terrace uh, with all the uh, sanitization and the uh, and the precaution for for hygiene factors kept. The only issue would be uh, if people from Terrace are coming into the bathroom. So, uh, because we so far have not got people coming into the store, uh, that would be something that has to be discussed internally and seen uh, where, where that can be applied and what that will lead to. Uh, customers coming in, dining outside and leaving from outside with disposable uh, utensils and plates. Um, yeah, Kathleen? Christina, were you speaking? I'm sorry, your 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 frame lit up. Uh, no, I wasn't. Uh, thank you for putting me back on. Sorry, technical difficulties. I just got on. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anything uh, that you'd like to add? You have outdoor seating behind the restaurant, and you've Our already had some things in place. Yes, we actually begun to put it together on Wednesday. Um, this will only be our second year um, having, so we were absolutely happy to have had built that last year. Um, it's a big cost for some restaurants. Um, and thankfully, everyone, the city is really lowering prices um, and allowing others to, uh, to open an outdoor dining facility. Uh, so Union League will be doing many of the same things, Allison, um, as Lorcio, you know, with the um, signage to stay seated, ordering your, your food and drink at the same time. Um, upon the entrance of the um, terrace, um, uh, we will have the hand sanitizer there um, required to uh, put that on for all guests uh, because they certainly have their responsibility as well. Um, so I don't want to double talk. I'm not sure what happened in the 12 minutes that I was gone. 
um, but you know, making sure that um, the guests also you know take a promise to us that they're they're going to try their best. Um, for going in and outside, uh, we also have only one door that we're going to be allowing the guests to go in and out, and that is in the Sherman's Alley. Um, there will be an entrance there for the bathroom, but a big, a large laminated sign. Um, stop, look, do you see anyone? If someone's coming out, you know, back up. So we're getting the language, um, just little reminders for uh, the guests to, to do. Um, and inside, I mean, restaurants are already an expert in um, safe food handling um, and sanitation, especially the past 10 years with allergies and restrictions. But now, we're, uh, again, as um, you know, the health department will be screening um, we will designate a shift, um, an employee per shift, uh, to check all of the bathrooms on an hourly basis and all of the um, handrails and doorknobs. Um, um, let's see. We'll also provide in all the common areas um, uh, wipes to wipe them down. If, if the guests feel more comfortable, I, I want to do it myself. I know I'm one of those people. Um, so give me, I want to make sure that I'm going to touch everything. It's like before sitting on a plane. You know, you bring your own zip lock bag with your wipes and you wipe all the clicker and then get everything down. Um, so they should, you know, customers should also take their um, part in this as well. But with the Union League, um, you know, we, we've done, we're uh, members of the uh, CRA, we have taken the promise. We've um, done the reopening from um, National Restaurant Association with SafeServe. And we'll make sure that we'll be, you know, talking with our staff, um, monitoring them on a daily basis, um, you know, and doing again, backing up all of Allison's points. Uh, touchless pay uh, payment. Didn't think of the, um, you know, did not think of the um, pencils. Um, so great idea. So we're all in this together, um, and and we'll make sure we do our part. I have the Connecticut restaurant promise on the screen and I'll we'll paste the link into the chat box. Thank you, Kathleen. We've also and linked this to the, um, the reopen New Haven page, as well as a link directly to the um, self certification required for uh, restaurants under the additional resources section. I'll just note too, I think um, uh, Director of Traffic, um, Doug, uh, wrote a comment and said that um, he agreed with um, our comments earlier about the loading spaces. Uh, he says, please apply, make your recommendation, and we'll review for, um, for health and safety, and we'll work together on that. Jenna, can you provide the guidance on uh, hours again from the executive order? We had another, a couple of questions on that. Sure. Yeah, I think there was a couple people who commented and they're right. So it's a it's going to be 11 p.m. Um, on Friday and Saturday and 9 p.m. all other days of the week. Um, for those who are interested in reading more, that's section 2A of the executive order. There is also some another follow up with this person on uh, plastic cutlery. Can someone provide some guidance on that? On sourcing. I think the um, use of it here. I'll, I'll I read that too. So I'll give it, a non-technical. It needs to be. Yeah. Sorry. Did you want me to go ahead? Mike. No. Go ahead. No. Keep going. So um, for for it needs to be wrapped disposable utensils, um, and I referenced that earlier um, during the presentation. Thank you, Director Bond. Um, anonymous attendee is wondering. Please tell me the beer bikes will not be driving around. That's going to fall under the social gatherings for now, but I think all of us are looking forward to the day that they do come back. Thank you. Um, another question, what about expanding seating into private parking lots? Is there an application needed? I think we covered this before, but Jenna, could you just reiterate the parking lot scenario here? Yes, I'd be happy to. Yes, you do need to apply to do outdoor seating on your private property, in a yard, in a grassy area, um, in a parking space, uh, but it will be very, very simple review. It's only gonna come to my department in zoning. We're gonna do a very quick look and health again has to make sure that every single person, every single restaurant is, um, is licensed from her department as well. So 
you have to apply even on private property and we'll make sure that it flows through the departments as quickly as possible. And there was some um, questions on what's the turnaround time for the applications. Could we just give some sense of an idea of timeline? Sure, you have a maximum, we have a maximum of 10 days to review the application and get it back to you from the day that it's considered complete. Uh, but we are going to try to do it quicker than that. And uh, they're asking about the access to the letter that you were reading off of. I don't know if that's the executive order or the uh, guidance on the Together New Haven website, but where can people find those, that information rather? Sure, all of the guidance documents, uh, the executive order summary that I was reading are all posted on the Reopen New Haven page that Kathleen uh, displayed. Uh, and she just put the link in the chat box. Perfect. Uh, another follow up from Wub from Lalabella. Can we use Temple Park for serving our customers from the restaurant? Yes, parks are available. You should apply. That's all I got for now. Are those all the questions in, in the chat? Uh, yeah, unless there's more, I think we can wait a little bit. Okay, we're going to also touch on communications uh, and how this will roll out. And besides what, what restaurants have done individually, and if I can pull up, uh, Christina, if you don't mind, I was going to pull up the, the pop up that you have on your site. I thought that was very good. And okay. Is Shellen Bones on the call? And if you are, do you mind if I pull up your website because you also had good information on it? So as soon as I went to Union Lean Cafe, uh, they have a they have a pop up that that explains and also Shell and Bones had some COVID uh, text as well on their site that I thought was very helpful the way it was laid out. If I could just get that for you, here we are. Well, we can make this available so you can have uh, some examples. That's awesome, Kathleen. I'll also note that um, any zoning provisions that would otherwise prevent some of the signage that you think is important uh, to, to communicate some of this stuff at your premises, those zoning provisions are waived. So feel free to um, sign appropriately, make sure it's scaled um, to the right size and submit those um, those proposals with your application for outdoor seating. Um, I just want to respond to a food truck question that I just saw in the queue. Um, any food truck applicants that have submitted their application with the health department, you skip the step, you must go to the fire marshal and schedule an appointment for an inspection first. Once that is completed, we will schedule an inspection and you will be part of the reopening. Uh, anyone from the city team want to add more about uh, communication there? I thought there was a, a comment in the chat about some kind of branded opportunity. Uh, Town Green was working on on a decal system. Uh, we'll, of course, layer that all into Together New Haven. Does anyone have any comments? I'll, I'm going to pull up the Together, the, excuse me, the Together New Haven site as well so you can see the branding. This was our initial 
portal, uh, which has been expanded. It's, it's beyond uh, uh, restaurants. It's obviously cross sector. I'll put this into the chat box as well. And I can't see the uh, box. Gage, do we have more questions? Yes. Are there any restrictions on sandwich boards on sidewalks? Will permits uh, be needed? So we have current restrictions on sandwich boards on sidewalks. To Jenna's point, we're going to be flexible with signage to support public health, but let's not make a mess of things either by putting up additional sandwich boards if we don't need them. It's going to be really important to reduce the number of touches and other stuff out there. Uh, is there any restrictions for a food truck working at a private residence? So Director Bond talked a little bit about the food truck. You know, we're going we're to start reopening food trucks, right? There's going to be a, lots of really strict protocols around that because of, you know, the concern of that closed environment. Be aware of the social gathering rules as well, which, you know, the 50% capacity rule with businesses, the five person rule. Otherwise, this stuff it will start to un, un, unravel at the state level, but let's not get ahead of it. Do you want me to go through a couple of slides really quickly? If you have or them. Do we have time? I do have them. Can we do one more question? Yes, you can do a question while I uh, All right. set up. Um, can food carts start on May 20th? No. Food carts are not quite ready to get started. Um, the phase, first phase is going to be food trucks. I'm trying to minimize and move this. Could you see my screen? Yes. Okay, so really quickly, because I know there were, there's a couple of questions beginning the inspection process. We want to make sure that um, food trucks, um, once you, uh, you've already submitted your application with the permitting department. And so now the next step is, uh, as I mentioned, is to make sure that you schedule an appointment with the fire marshal to, to get that inspection successfully completed. Our licensing and inspection process will be as follow. We want to make sure that we're communicating directly with the manager or the CFPM who is going to be able to discuss with us the operation status of what they're doing around phone orders, Grubhub, Grab and Go, and Uber Eats. We also want to be able to talk about um, determining all staff that have been trained on proper cleaning and sanitizing procedures, including what chemicals to be utilized. As you know, the, the issuance of guidance for um, proper um, disinfectants through EPA and OSHA has been outlined, and we want to make sure that um, you are preparing your food truck employees that will be supporting to ensure that they have the proper training ongoing before you start operating and every two weeks thereafter. Determine a cleaning plan for your trucks um, and want to make sure that you have the proper cleaners and sanitizers. We want to, we also want to make sure that you're considering the health and safety um, of all times. There will be a maximum of two employees allowed inside the truck at any time. That's going to be very critical that you maintain the social distancing um, inside. You may have one additional person taking orders outside of the food truck. Adequate social distancing, again, is critical of a minimum of six feet. All employees must be wearing masks and covering at all times, and a work log should be created in which employees will be able to sign in and sign out if they're doing shifts. They should be if the shifts should be staggered to help minimize employee contact with each other and have a daily check a daily health check of before an employee starts of screening protocol of CDC symptoms of COVID-19 to make sure that your staff is healthy to be able to work. Ensure that a staff is familiar of those signs and symptoms and have proper postings. As mentioned earlier, we will have proper postings and signage available on the website so you can download them. However, you can also go to the CDC website to download the signs and symptoms of COVID-19 posters. They're available in multiple languages. Um, we are asking inv individuals to please have them in English and Spanish. Employees should know um, who to report to if they have any ex are exhibiting any sign and symptoms of COVID-19 so that there's a proper isolation plan in place. We want to make sure that um, the hand washing, we want to make sure that they're following proper hand washing protocols and that there's hand washing stations that are functional when we are doing the inspections. And we want to make sure that the water reaches a minimum of 100 Fahrenheit. We want to make sure that everything is fully equipped with the proper power, um, paper towels, soap, trash cans, 
hand washing signs and are easily accessible and that they're being changed frequently. We are asking um, that the um, protocols are in place. We're gonna be reviewing those protocols and that there's personal protection available and that they're being worn at all times. Employees should stay home and be encouraged to stay home if they're experiencing any symptoms. We're asking that proper food temperature control are in place. This is for um, very common. We are gonna be checking for temperature, cold temperature, hot temperature of foods that need to be cold and proper temperature for that and those that need to be um, hot. Thermometers must be present for checking food product temperatures and calibrated um, um, as the protocol that you are aware of. Food product inspection. We are going to be determining the food product is coming from is an approved source. We will be making sure that the food products are made in, um, are prepared ahead of time and transported either hot or cold. And we want to, if applicable, we want to make sure that food products are being transported in hot boxes or the proper coolers um, as necessary. We want to make sure that the food is wholesome, not expired, spoiled, or tampered with. We want to make sure that all food are properly labeled and that everything is stored accordingly and that there's no cross-contamination cross um, occurring. P um, water plumbing and um, needs to be properly checked and in working order. We want to make sure that ice coolers must be, um, have the drains on them so they can be properly drained and adequate supply of hot and cold water is available. We are washing equipment. We wanna make sure that there's a, a wear washing equipment that's functional and clean and that there's sanitizer test strips available on the day, um, on an ongoing basis as you're reopening. We wanna make sure that there's other considerations that you should be thinking about. We wanna make sure that all surfaces are thoroughly cleaned and sanitized. Floors, walls, and ceilings must be maintained and cleaned. Outside of your food truck should be maintained and cleaned before you start, during, and after. Workstations should be cleaned and maintained with maximum social distancing at all times. Special equipment should be assigned to staff of each staff member so that there is no cross-contamination. Half floor markings so that there's six feet social distancing between customers and staff as well. We want to make sure that we encourage takeout and curbside. There should be no congregating outside of any of the food trucks um, at any time. We want to make sure that everyone, customers, maintain health as well um, and safety. So customers should also be wearing masks and face coverings. We want to make sure that if you have the, um, that you install a plexiglass barrier at the service order window to maintain social distancing. Hand sanitizer should be available for the customer at the window. Signage should be posted of how we, violations can be reported, um, indicating 211 or the City of New Haven C Click Fix link. Condiments should either be prepackaged or self served. They should be no self served, um, they should be individual containers or prepackaged only. We also want to encourage customers to call order and order ahead, so please promote your phone numbers so that people can. Um, reduce congregating in front of a food truck. Make sure that the silverware is pre-wrapped. Another option is to have pre-wrapped disposable, as I mentioned earlier. As always, as recommended earlier as well, use touchless appliances and discourage cash and try to ensure that you have credit card machines and enough trash cans. Um, and, and, that the, and if there's needs to be reported of the dumpsters being filled to make sure that you contact Charlene Taylor of any issues that you're reported to have on site with cleaning. Customer health and safety. Remember, no self-service topping stations, no self-service beverages or fountain drinks, no refills of any food or drink products. Thank you so much. I'm going to uh, turn it back over to the, the moderator for today. Thank you, Director Bond. Uh, Gage, do we have any other questions in the chat box? If not, I think we're going to uh, try and wrap it up. One thing, one quick thing on um, eating ware, does the silverware have to be plastic uh, yes. as long as it's pre-wrapped? Yes. All right, thank Dispose you. Dispose utensils only. Got it. I think that's all I got. Yes. Okay, we're going to make all these links available. Uh, the document, the, the link that had all the documents on it uh, for reopen, we will keep adding to that and anything that we sent out, uh, we posted rather uh, and referenced, we will send out to the email distribution uh, we received through your registration. 
Kathleen, um, would you be able to include the mask uh, graphic that Director Bond shared in a previous call? I think it's important that our business owners and providers have that um, visible too for people to see. Yes, we, we can uh, put everything together and, and have it in one place. Uh, well, if, that, if there are no more questions, we want to thank you. I know this is a busy time of the day uh, for the restaurants that are doing takeout. We really appreciate your time. And to our panelists, I know how crazy it's been for you as well. And uh, for my colleagues, thank you again. And we look forward to seeing everyone safely out and about uh, on May 20th. Thank you. Great job, Kathleen. Great job, all. Thank you.